Hello and welcome to the Little Drops of Wonderful podcast. This is where I share all of the knitting and crochet and creative things I've been up to over the past few weeks and this is going to be my wrap up for November and for 2023. This is the last podcast of 2023. My name is Ali. I live in Kent in the very southeast of England with my husband and my two daughters and today is Wednesday. I would normally be at work but I'm not because I've got the day off <laughs> and I'm going to film this podcast. Uh, you can find me on Instagram and Ravelry as Starry Eyes Alley. And I also vlog on my other channel, This Little Wonderful Life, where we are currently bang smack in the middle of Vlogmas. So if you love some festive, daily, ordinary life stuff, I will pop a link in the description box for you so you can hop on over there. I'm a bit snotty, as is the curse of a vlogging month. I don't get ill at any time of the year unless I'm doing daily vlogs. Um, when we started, Dan and my youngest daughter Phoebe had a cold and I think I've caught it. It's mainly in my ears. I feel like I can't hear anything. So if I'm shouting, I apologize. So I've made an attempt to make things a bit festive around me. I have got my traditional annual candy cane necklace out. I love this. I've had it for years. It's glass and I wear it every December. I've also got my Christmas cushion my, with a vintage print. I love this also. I got it from Asda years ago and they never did them again. I wish they did. Mind you, it's nice just having one. Um, one uh, otherwise I would have bought a whole room full and it might have detracted a bit. Less is more. And as you can see, we do have a tree up here. I might just risk messing up my uh, setup to show you. We bought a new tree and it's really tall. <laughs> it's seven and a half feet, it doesn't reach the ceiling. I've messed up my setup now, haven't I? Right, now I'm in shot, that's okay. Yeah, it's not decorated yet because we only bought it yesterday. We've had our old tree for 20 years, over 20 years. Uh, so we went and bought a new one yesterday. We needed a bigger one because this room is so tall that the other one always felt a bit lost. So we got it up, decided we like it, and we're gonna decorate it tonight. So there's nothing on it at the moment, bar one little decoration that my friend Charlotte made me. She came to visit me this week and she crocheted me a beautiful little mushroom decoration. So that's the only decoration that is currently on the tree. And I'll talk about this festive thing a bit later. <laughs> November has been a lovely month. I uh, got quite a bit more making done than I had in the previous month because I was doing for October, back in October. Uh, so it felt a bit more relaxed and we also had a month of celebrations. Dan and I celebrated our 20 year wedding anniversary and uh, we made a little vlog about our day out if you want to see that. It's on uh, This Little Wonderful Life. We went to Rochester uh, which is a lovely sort of festive place to go at this time of year. Very Dickensian and yeah, it was a really nice day and then the day the next day was my youngest daughter Phoebe's 13th birthday so we now have two teenagers in the house one of whom my oldest is not far off becoming a fully grown adult she'll be 18 in March which is uh, yeah I think uh, Dan and I are suddenly feeling like we might be grown-ups <laughs> so yeah I got lots of making done but not a huge amount of progress and I made a little video in November as well a sort of week of making to sort of help motivate myself and I really enjoyed doing that and it really worked to kind of set myself a little goal and work towards it over the course of a week and film it. And your feedback on that was so lovely. You all said you really enjoyed it. So I'll definitely do that again. I might not do that before the end of the year, but I'll definitely do it in January uh, as we're into the cosy blanket, cosy winter blanket make along, which I'll talk about uh, shortly. So thank you for your enthusiasm on that. Shall we get started with some finished objects? I have a couple of finished objects and these were the two things I was working on when you saw me in that weekly making video. So th this pair, if you watched it, you will have already seen. These are my finished Swiss dot shorty socks. It's a pattern by Nancy Wheeler of Knit Sip Happy. Let me show you the, the better side. I noticed that I'd done one side better than the other. There we go. These are the better side. <laughs> and what you do is, so I had a sock set, a 50, 20, 50 grams, 20 grams sock set from Little French Meadow, uh, who no longer die, in the colour she was a showgirl. So the main colour is this one that you see on the heel, and then the contrast is the red. 
and you do little uh, raised sort of garter stripes with your contrast colour. It works so beautifully. My friend Becky at Batter Blighty also made a pair of these in much subtler colours and they look so good. So I'm definitely going to make more, more of these with a sort of more subtle contrast to the stripes. They were really fun to do. They were really quick to knit up. I like the little garter edge to the heel. Um, I really liked that. I thought that was easy to do and looked neat. The only thing I would change is I would make the ribbing a little bit longer. I think this was 12 or 15 rows. I'd probably go a bit, bit more rows than that. Uh, as usual, I knit them on DPNs, 2.25 millimeter. And apparently I can't hold the sock blockers. <laughs> Nothing more to say about that, um, other than I love them and I'm looking forward to now putting them on my feet and wearing them. I asked my daughters if they would like any more hand-knit socks. They said no. <laughs> That's not very knit-worthy, is it? Lilia said she's got plenty of hand-knit socks already, thanks very much. And Phoebe was just a bit unenthusiastic, although she did choose some yarn that she liked. So I am going to try and knit her some socks with that. It was a green lampkin Christmas yarn. I might just force hand-knit socks on them regardless. And the other thing I finished was a very important project. It was Caitlin the Giraffe. Every year my girls request something handmade for their birthday and I didn't think Phoebe was going to want something this year but she did. She just came in one day and she said can I choose something and we went through Edward's Menagerie, uh, the book by Kerry Lord and she chose a giraffe and she asked to have it ginormous. So here, here is Caitlin. Um, as usual, when I do my amigurumi, she has got armature wire inside so you can pose her neck and she can even do that and it means that the necks don't go floppy. The way I do that is, so in, in this case it was slightly different. I knit the body and when I get to about here, I get my armature wire which is a 3mm armature wire, it's quite thick. I make a little curl at the bottom and absolutely cover and coat it in... Uh, stuffing fluff and then I stuff all around it all the single bit of wire sticking up here so it's poking out the top and I work around the wire then I leave all that and move on to the head now the head is worked from back to front so once I got to about here halfway I then poked the armature wire through the hole of the crochet into the head and did the same I manipulated it round and round so there would be no sharp edges to escape and then completely embedded it in stuffing, stuffed all around it and finished the crochet off, stuffing as I went. Um, yeah, it's really, really, I'll try and put a link below to the armature wire that I use, I think I bought it on eBay. And yeah, oh, and I did uh, her patches. So I held four strands of DK cotton yarn uh, together. So I got a nice bulky weight. And then for the patches, I had one strand of Bernat, Bernat blanket yarn, which is honestly a revelation to me. I fell in love with this when it arrived. I'm going to make a blanket out of it. I also have other plans for things to make with Bernat blanket yarn, but you'll have to wait until next year for that. And I also used it for, what do you call this? The muzzle? The snout? <laughs> do giraffes have snouts or muzzles? Or just like a nose? I don't know. And these are called the... Oh, what were they called? The corny cones, corny cones or something. And I, I used the, um, I just used cotton for this because otherwise they were getting a bit too bulky. Yeah, she was a lot of fun to make. She's very cuddly, very soft, and you very tactile with these bits. But if I was to make her again, I'd make her entirely out of burnout blanket yarn. So yeah, that's Caitlin. Shall we sit her in the background so she can join us? Sit next to the cushion, maybe. You sit there, Caitlin. You can be our little podcast buddy for the rest of it. Right, works in progress or stuff that I progressed in November. I'm just going to have another slurp of my tea, which of course at this time of year, it could be a Christmas mug, but we all know that truly it is Strictly season. So I've got my Strictly socks mug. <laughs> now this is the bit where I'm not organised at all. I've written down the things I've been working on, but I haven't kind of looked them out. So they're all just in a pile here. So the first thing I've written down is drippity drop socks. Where are my drippity drop socks? Are they in here? 
Yes. Okay, so my Drippity Drop socks are a pair of my Strictly socks that I'm working on. I've got several pairs. Um, my uh, Swiss Dot Shorties that I just showed you were the first, uh, my second pair of Strictly socks that I've finished so far. So this is my third pair. I'm making it out of Ball and Bliss in a non-sparkle base from Green Lampkin Yarn. This is one of the official Strictly Sock Along colourways for this year. Look at that. Isn't that beautiful? Suzanne has moved away from Etsy and she's now got her own website, uh, which I'll put on the screen and link underneath if, ooh, <laughs> if you're interested in uh, going to buy any of this or any uh, more of her yarn. And here is where I am on sock one of my Dippity Drop sock. I have turned the heel. I am on the gusset decreases. And I love this pattern. The Dippity Drop socks the Drippity Drop Socks is a pattern by Kay Jones of the Bakery Bears. It's a really simple repeat. I think it's about a four row repeat. You can remember it really easily and it just creates this wonderful texture. I've already knit a pair of these before and I wear them all the time. They, I don't know what the pattern does to make the fit feel so nice, but I absolutely love it. I'm doing it exactly as per pattern and I will use the umbrella toe that's in the pattern as well. That is my favourite toe. So that's the progress I've made. I think before I was only like a little bit past the cuff. I normally knit my socks, socks concurrently, but I couldn't be bothered to wind the ball into two. So I'm just knitting them one and then I'll knit another. But I know I enjoy this pattern so much, so it won't be a problem. I've also put in a bit of work on my virus shawl. So last time I mentioned that um, I wasn't very well in October. And I always turn to crochet as my comfort craft. And I decided that I couldn't be, I couldn't call myself a proper crocheter unless I had at least once made a virus shawl because I've never made one. And I had a cotton acrylic blend cake thing. <laughs> Such a, what a, what a description. Cotton acrylic blend cake thing. Let me find the ball band. Where is it? Here it is. It, oh, ah, what is occurring? I had to turn the camera off then. It took me so long to untangle that. I've got another couple of skeins of yarn in here. I might put them in a little plastic bag. Um, oh, I could just put them away. So this is the Shepia's Whirl, this one. And it is in the colour Black Forest Singer. And it is... 60% cotton, 40% acrylic. There's a thousand grams here, uh, which is, no, is that? No, that's not right, sorry. There's a thousand meters here, <laughs> not a thousand grams. I did think that sounded quite heavy. <laughs> and this is what it looks like. Get to the point. Isn't that lovely? So I was speaking last time about how I wanted the grey to be at the end and I've got completely mixed up. I was thinking I was working it top up, bottom up, but actually obviously it's worked top down. But I don't know, my mind had not sort of arrived at that conclusion. So I'm now doing it uh, grey down to pink, which I'm fine with actually because I was thinking the grey is going to be more prominent because it's a smaller area and then as it gets wider the pink and the green are going to be thin a bit so I think that will actually look really lovely. Look I'm, I'm into another colour it's so exciting. I have put this down for about a week and a half and I do worry that when I come back to it I'm going to have to spend a bit of time trying to remember it. Once you get it it's a four or five row repeat which I've written down on a bit of paper and just popped in my project bag as a kind of prompt. Um, but once you get it, you know, you do know where you are and I am enjoying it, but um, I haven't quite got it cemented in my brain yet. And that is all living in my wonderful bag by this Lizzie. This is he knits, but also this, this Lizzie sews on Facebook. Chickens, because we have chickens <laughs> and it's yellow. I love this bag so much. Perfect size by, for my um, virus shawl as well. And I thought I should give an honourable mention to my Christmas jumper. Now I have released another Christmas jumper, uh, project Christmas jumper video. So if you've watched that, you will already know this. So really this isn't, this isn't progress. This is more reverse progress because 
I'd had a bit of a disaster with my first attempt and had to start again because the, my dye lots were so different for the yarn I was using. And then when I was filming my last update, I realised whilst filming that I was using the wrong yarn for my grey contrast colour. I have no idea how I managed to do that. So I've basically knit mo a lot of the yoke twice and ha I'm having to frog. <laughs> so I've started that process, but even when you're frogging colour work, it's, you know, it's not, not an easy process. So might save that for a bit of mindless in front of the telly stuff but I wanted to show you my bag again I'll show actually let me show you the the project I'm talking about so this is my attempt that I'm currently frogging you can see I've got the needle here where I'm picking up stitches I've used the wrong grey so it just it wasn't popping and I thought oh what's going on with my colour work why is it not looking as good as my previous attempt and then I realised it's because this yarn the grey is a lot thinner it's not the right one uh, this is the Festive Yoke Pullover by Skein Deer Knits and one day I will have a finished one. You're going to hear some drilling and some banging. Next door are having their bathroom done. Over the road are completely rebuilding a house. So it's all vans and drills and everything here at the moment. Uh, yeah, so that's the jumper that I am currently frogging in order to start yet again for a third time. Third time lucky. But my beautiful bag, my lovely Alice bag, because I love Alice in Wonderland so much, is by Lemon Tree Corner, and I will link her underneath. And this was a lovely gift, and I've also got on here my bag charm of, again, Green Lampkin Yarns. She sells the most one, she makes and sells the most wonderful little bag charms. And she is also a chicken keeper, like me. So she sent me, sent me this from one, Mother of chickens to another. Just gonna have a nose blowing break. Okay, so I normally then uh, like to mention what my plans are for the coming making month. So for December, I have written for my December making plans, I just want to enjoy my advent projects. So I'm gonna show you uh, and talk a little bit about what I'm working on for my advent projects, but first, I am going to change the battery in my camera. So this actually also leads me on to talking about a couple of other advent projects. So behind here, hidden, this is where I keep my blankets. There's like a little ledge behind here. Um, the cushion sits in front of the back of the sofa. So it's really handy for folding up blankets. So you would have seen this a million times. This is a advent project that I made over the course of quite a few years. It is the uh, Granny Triangle Wrap by Anna Boo's House. Uh, which is written for a bulky weight yarn but you know I made it with fingering weight minis just changing the colour whenever I opened a new one for my advents and I just kept going until it was big enough to call it a giant triangle blanket Ta -da. <laughs> and I'm making another one I enjoyed this project so much that I wanted to make another one in a slightly different way so I have got I am very lucky sorry oh, I'll stop hiding behind the blanket I'm very lucky that I have got a uh, Advent gift this year from Molly at a homespun house, who I'm sure you all, you all know very well. Her yarn is beautiful. She is also doing Vlogmas on her Patreon, by the way. And she sent me her beautiful Advent. I opened it up uh, and started it over on my This Little Wonderful Life vlogs. And I am going to make another granny triangle wrap with that yarn because it is a fade i've got 24 20 gram minis somebody asked on my last episode how much uh, my existing one weighs it weighs about 615 grams and i've got 24 20 gram minis so that is 480 <laughs> grams so it's going to be a fair bit smaller but that's fine this is huge it's a proper blanket but it's still going to be a big you know, thing to wear sitting on the sofa. And I'm really looking forward to seeing how it works as a fade. The only thing I'm slightly worried about is as it gets bigger, will I be able to complete a mini in a row? And then I thought, am I really worried about that? <laughs> is this something to worry about? No, it's still going to look utterly beautiful and I'm gonna love it. So I've made a very, very tiny start because I've had next to no time to sit like crochet, I'm so behind on Christmas stuff. Like, what day is it today? The 6th of December today. I was out Christmas shopping yesterday. I haven't done anything. 
So this is what I have accomplished. <laughs> it's like the world's smallest blanket. Just tuck myself up in it. So this is with the day one, which is called Milk and Honey. Obviously, spoiler alerts if you haven't opened your homespun house advent. But look at this little guy. You get this was a little gift that you got as soon as you opened it. Oh, he's a little elf or a little gnome with his holly. Oh, he's just adorable. So he's going to live on my project. I'm going to move him up a bit so he's not so dangly. I don't want to catch him on anything. So that's as far as I've got, but I've got the pattern in my head now. I know what I'm doing, I remember. So I'm hoping to get a bit of work done on that later today. I will show you the other minis that I've got so far. I haven't opened today's one yet. So hang on, one, two, three, four, five. Yeah, so that's five. So that's the first one, Milk and Honey. I've been numbering them as I um, take them out so I don't lose track. Okay, so number two was Fuzzy Slippers. Number three, Candy Cane Lane. Number four, Nutcracker Ballet. Oh, look how they look. How they look. And number five, Peppermint Pinwheel. Oh my goodness, I was so excited to see these work up. Oh, look at that. Isn't that just beautiful? Oh. Molly, you are so, oh, wow, so clever. Orange and pink is like one of my all time favorite color combinations. So that is my Homespun House Advent project. And then I have the Advent that I was buying all year from Green Lumpkin Yarn. This is like the Green Lumpkin Yarn episode. <laughs> um, uh, so I was buying it in installments over the course of the year. And for that, uh, also I got 20 grams. So for that, uh, I am making Oh, no. I've got it all in the same bag just because I went to my mum's at the weekend and I wanted to take them both with me. Um, but I do actually have another bag to put one in. That's what I might do. I'm going to put my homespun house ones now into my Betsy Makes wintery bag to stop with the getting tangled up. One moment. Talk amongst yourselves while I get myself organised. Get myself organised, not myself, myself. Oh, I should mention as well that for, so I used a 3.25 millimetre hook when I made uh, the one I've just shown you, my original granny triangle. And I don't know which, I don't know if I just maybe used a normal like pony one or something, but I couldn't find a 3.25 millimetre hook in my hook stash so I thought I'll just order a clover one one of these and I I hate it I've got loads of these and I've never had a problem with it before but it's too short and I've got really small hands but I'm just finding it's too short and I'm not finding it comfortable so then I thought I'm going to treat myself to a nice handmade one I'll go to Etsy I'll find a nice handmade one can't get one in a 3.25 so if you know of anyone that does do it in the UK or I might make it myself. I have made really rubbish Fimo handled hooks that look bad but are really comfortable before. So I'll persevere with this for now, but I don't like it. It's too short, too short. Right, let's get back to the point, shall we? So with my Green Lampkin Yarn Advent, I am making a new project. Oh, I hope I haven't. So I've just done this took me so long. I have just done the first bit. I have completed 350 foundation half double crochets. This took forever. It's going to get easier from now on. But yeah, so I'm just going to... That is the first bit with the first colour. And I am making... I'll tell you about the colours in a minute. I am making the... I have a real block with the name of this. The Mini Stripes Wrap. I'll put a picture on the screen because this is just a really bad black and white copy. It's the Mini Stripes Wrap by Dana Ray Makes. I was nominated to receive one of Dana Ray Makes um, patterns and I chose this one. And she also sent me her Mini Pops Cow as well, which I will also pop a picture up. So it's going to be between either the Mini Pops Cow or the Mini Stripes Wrap. And I went for the Mini Stripes Wrap. 
and I am about, I, I fussed about a bit thinking, how am I going to order the stripes? And I, am I just going to do them in the order I open them or, or am I going to try and mix them up, like do one and then another one and another one and just keep mixing them? And I started to really, really overthink it. I was like, oh no. So I think what I'm going to do is just use one ball, finish it, use the next one. I think that's what I'm going to do. Oh, will I? Because the other option is I could do, I could, I could do 24 rows of my 24 colours and then go back and do the same 24 again, couldn't I? I might do that. I might do that. Watch this space. You'll find out in January what I decided to do. So that first colour. So these I'm keeping in their bags. Oh, my lovely bag that I'm keeping this in, by the way, is for, it was made for me by Petra. Cheeky Magoo from the comments. And she sent this to me um, as a little just hello, thank you for the podcast present. And I love it. I just love it. I love the mustard yellow. I love the bears. I love the green. I love it. So I've got that. She sent some little stitch markers. So I've clipped them to the fabric. So I've always got those as well. Goodness me, I'm going on. Aren't I? So the advent from Suzanne is around the world themed. For, so for each um, day, you get the yarn inspired by a Christmas celebration from around the world. So number one, the purple one. I'm not going to read them all out to you because it will take for ages, was La Bafana in Italy, which is uh, a tradition about a witch, a Christmas witch. And then day two was milk and cookies, which is, of course, America, milk and cookies. Day three was Brazil with Christmas cactus. Isn't that pretty? I think that's my absolute favourite one so far. I love that one. Day four was, oh, I don't know how to say this, parole or parole. It's, uh, it's, uh, it's a Christmas decoration from, from, the Philippi, from the Philippines. And that's a lovely one as well. Very pretty. And finally, the one I opened yesterday for day five was Lebkuchen, which I absolutely love. It's a little sweet cake biscuit thing from Germany and you could get them in Lidl's and Aldi's. <laughs> and I have a, I buy them and put them in a, a glass jar and just eat one like, every time I pass. <laughs> I really like the ones with the white uh, chop, the white icing glaze. In fact, I've run out. I need to get some more. So those are my advent projects and those are the things that I am planning on working on throughout the month of December. And I am very much looking forward to doing so and carving out some time to do so. I've just remembered a work in progress that I didn't share with you and it's here and it's really huge. <laughs> but I didn't write it down. It's all connected to my Christmas jumper. So because I have failed in my mission to have a Christmas jumper for this Christmas, I suddenly thought maybe I could make a really chunky one <laughs> and get that done. I don't think that's going to happen either, but you never know. If I feel like it, maybe I'll add that to my December making plans. So I've already done the first panel. Now this pattern is by a, uh, AC Crochet. Is it AC Crochet? Hang on, let me double check I've got that right. Yeah, AC Crochet's Easy and Fast Chunky Sweater. It's free on YouTube as a follow along tutorial and she even has a matching skirt that goes with it. Um, you're not going to get me in a chunky crochet matching skirt, but she looked amazing in it. Uh, so this is the first panel. And what I'm doing is I'm holding uh, three strands of D... No, what am I doing? No, I'm holding two strands of DK cotton yarn and double with some Flutterby Chunky, which is super soft. I think it's a James... Yeah, James C. Brett yarn to get like this bulky thing. It also, because I'm using that James C. Brett, it softens the uh, the cotton a bit. And I'm striping it, so I'm, I'm holding a kind of purpley colour throughout, but every two rows I'm swapping between brown and blue. And these colours remind me of like the colours of The Snowman by Raymond Briggs. 
I don't know if anyone else thinks of that when they see these type of colours. But to me, and I love Raymond Briggs's illustrations. I'm a, I'm a big fan of all of his work, not just the snowman stuff. And um, yeah, I really like how it looks. So the idea is you make two of these panels and then you sew it together and you get the neck and then you've got really poofy arms. And then if you want, there's a bit you can do at the bottom to kind of tighten it in at the bottom. Um, yeah, so I'm really enjoying working on it. It's, it's good fun. And whether or not it will be done for Christmas, I don't know. Before we move on and talk about patterns on my radar, I promised you last time that my serious light would be Christmas ready and I'm sure you've noticed it is. So this video is sponsored by Serious Readers who are the people that make the wonderful Serious Lights and this is my festive Serious Light. Let's just, let's just bring her in. So she is wearing Glittery tinsel. Oh, I thought it was snowing then. No, it's really foggy. Can you have fog and snow at the same time? I think it's just raining. Uh, yeah, so this is my serious light. She is, oh, she is wearing uh, gold lame tinsel and red bells. And she is also, or was before it fell off, adorned with a absolutely bonkers tinsel robin that my mum made. <laughs> It's like an angry bird, but uh, it has made an escape. Let's put you there, little angry Robin. So Serious Readers are a UK uh, company. They're based in Aylesby here in the UK where they hand built all of their lights. In all seriousness, this is my absolute best friend every day at the moment when I'm sitting of an evening uh, crocheting 350 foundation half double crochets my little friend my serious light is with me all the way it's also incredibly useful for locating the numbers on an advent calendar and if you've been watching my vlog mess you will have seen us doing just that we've just some of the numbers are really hard to find on our paper advent calendar and the serious light makes it light work ah, light work i love that you can adjust the width of the beam and as i've said before you can see i'm sitting here and there's no orange kind of glow that you kind of get with a normal light and that is because the HD light range that they make uses daylight wavelength technology which replicates as closely as technically possible um, the daylight wavelength spectrum so it's a really good kind of it doesn't feel like a false light I'm gonna turn that off for now thank you serious light you may now go back to just looking festive if I tip you up a bit I might be able to Put our angry bird back on you. Oh, yeah. It's also an excellent addition to your festive decorations at this time of year. So the Serious Lights range consists of the high definition light, which is what I've got, the Alex light and the classic light. And all of the lights in the Serious Lights range come with a five year warranty as well. And I have a fantastic offer code for you. If you use my code, which is SR485, or you can use the link in the description or in the pinned comment, uh, you will get £100 off on the HD lights range and free delivery. And this is an international offer as well. Uh, so I know many of you have messaged me to say that you've already taken advantage of it and that you're really, really pleased. And someone mentioned that if you ask them, they can change the plug. So if you're ordering from somewhere that's not in the UK, they can make it so it fits your plug system. But I don't know if that's true. So, but it might be worth asking them, but someone definitely said that that's what they did for them, which is amazing. What amazing customer service. They're so lovely as well. And when you get the light, it's all beautifully boxed and it tells you which bit to take out first. It's like a, it's like an extra layer of fun. So yes, thank you so much Serious Readers for sponsoring this video. Uh, I honestly love my Serious Light and couldn't be without it for crocheting, knitting, reading, or advent calendar opening. Okay, patterns on my radar slash cosy winter blanket make along 2024. I'm pretty sure that in my last episode I called it 2023, which of course is wrong. The hashtag is cosy winter blanket along 24 because it's next year. It starts on the 1st of January and it ends on the leap year 29th of February. And I am running this with my lovely friend Cherie, who is also doing Vlogmas. She's doing them every few days. 
over at the Ollie and Bella podcast. She got in touch and said, shall we do the cosy winter blanket along again, which we did a few years ago. And I was well up for that. So she has now opened the thread on Ravelry and you can go there and discuss things. It's one thread for chatter and finished objects. And there's also the hashtag on Instagram. So she's gonna draw a winner at the end of the make along, just one winner from the, ha the, the thread. And I will draw one winner from the hashtag on Instagram. It's super simple and super relaxed if you want to join in. Whips are allowed as long as they're under 50% under done. You can crochet on it and you don't have to finish. Uh, and like I say, it starts on the 1st of January. And um, I thought for patterns on my radar, it might be fun because we'll all be starting soon to share some blanket inspiration. Now, this was probably one of the hardest things to compile because it's impossible to kind of whittle down the the thousands and thousands of amazing blanket patterns there are for both knit and crochet. Although I did notice that crochet far outstrips knitting in number of patterns on Ravelry uh, for blankets. And it is my preferred method, but I have tried to include some knitted ones as well. So first of all, obviously I've already mentioned the Granny Triangle Wrap by Anna Boo's House. It's a free pattern. It's supposed to be a shawl, but as you've seen, you can knit it until it's a huge triangle blanket size. I cannot recommend it highly enough. It's the most used blanket in our house. Uh, so yes, that's my first one. I'll, I'll put a picture up of how it's supposed to look as a shawl. <laughs> uh, and then the Habitation Throw by Helen Stewart. Now the, the person that made me think of this was my friend Sarah at Yarn Mugs who is also doing Vlogmas. <laughs> I feel like I'm saying that about everybody. So she finished this year her habitation throw using Advent yarns from last year. It was so beautiful. I'll ask her if it's okay to put a picture up of her one. Um, yeah, it's a really lovely knitted blanket. I very nearly decided to make that this year, but I knew that a knitted blanket wouldn't do it for me. Uh, and that is an, uh, obviously a knitted one. It's uh, written for fingering weight yarn. It's six pounds. Then I thought I'd mention, so this one behind me is the Granny Stripe Blanket by Attic24. I've made a few of these. This particular one is an advent one. Uh, Trying to show you without having to move everything. Oh, I'm just gonna have to move everything. Rather. So I really liked this one. This was an advent project a couple of years ago. So again, it's advent yarns that I just put in in the order I opened them, but I held them double with a grey yarn throughout. So I kind of got a really nice heavy mulled blanket. And yeah, again, I, this is one of my favorite things. And then I just did a really simple um, plain granny border. But the pattern essentially is the granny stripe pattern by Attic24. Let me just put everything back together. That will do. Uh, and that's free on her blog. And I wanted to mention as well, if you are over there, the Neat Ripple Blanket by Attic24 as well. Another one that I've made so many times. Uh, you can even make them not blanket size. I made a ripple, neat ripple scarf. I just made it about that wide and just made it really long. Uh, they're both such fantastic patterns and her tutorials are brilliant for crochet beginners. And yeah, she is the queen of the blankets. So, uh, and yeah, free. And then another knitted one. Uh, is the Sweet Shop Blanket by Laura Penrose, who, guess what, <laughs> is also doing Vlogmas. <laughs> um, it's a knitted blanket, uh, it's, it's written for DK weight and it's six pounds. Uh, and it's really lovely, it looks like a sort of traditional type of quilt type thing, I really like it. And I think that would work really well with minis as well, actually, if you wanted to, wouldn't it? You could do like a neutral and then do the other little triangles with your Advent minis. Ooh, that's quite a good idea. I don't know if that's possible, not knowing much about knitted blankets, but it looks like you could do that. And speaking of like a traditional blanket feel to a, a, a traditional quilt feel to a blanket, I had to mention the Crochet Star Quilt by Sandra Paul of Cherry Heart. It's a crochet one written for sport weight yarn and it's £4.50. I mean, she designs the most beautiful patterns, but this one just is a total wow factor. If you see me keep 
like my eyes darting like that is because there's all kinds of activity going on with builders over the road and I'm being a bit of a nosy neighbour like, hmm, are they putting in a wall today? Oh, have they got the plasterers in yet? <laughs> Looks like they might be doing electrics. Uh, right, so yes, more crochet. Uh, the Bright Side Blanket by Tony Lipsy. Now I love Tony Lipsy's patterns. I've only ever made, I think, one, maybe two of her patterns. So the Bright Side Blanket is a crochet pattern. It's written for worsted weight yarn and it's $5, which is a, just over four pounds, four pounds 20 or something. It's a really simple design with this wonderful uh, bobble edge, but it's just, I guess it's called Bright Side because all it's supposed to be like a, a, a neutral color and then a really bright poppy edge to it. And I really like, that I think that would look lovely draped over the sofa and yeah I like the idea of that maybe with cotton yarn and then speaking of uh, giant triangles as I seem to do a lot um Tony also has the Arveda shawl Arveda shawl Arveda shawl um which is a crochet pattern for DK weight yarn it's seven dollars fifty which is about six pound twenty um but I really like it but whether or not I would do the fringing I don't know fringing for me uh, at the moment where I am with <laughs> my personality might be a bit too much sensory ickiness. I don't think I could do fringing. <laughs> but it does look really good with the fringing. I just don't think I could cope with it. But it would be lovely without the fringing as well. And finally, I wanted to do a, a final knitted one. Now, I, I don't know if I will ever knit a blanket. But if I was going to, I wonder, I think this one might be pretty high on my list. It's a free pattern by Stephen West and it is the garter squish blanket it is uh designed it's a knitted design it's designed for bulky weight yarn it's free and it's just a really simple garter stitch blanket with an i-cord edge it would be an excellent stash buster you could hold several yarns um together to make it, it yeah I, I think I would be severely tempted by that knowing how squishy garter stitch is and knowing how big my stash is, <laughs> that would be a great combination, wouldn't it? I just, I don't know what it is about knitted blankets. I think they just scare me a bit. Excitingly, next year, I'm going to mention Suzanne again at Green Lumpkin Yarn. When she got wind of the fact that Cherie and I were doing our blanket along again, she messaged us and she was like, oh my goodness, this is such a serendipitous, serendipitous? I am launching a blanket club next year. Now, she's messaged me all the details. So I'm hoping I'll be able to share more with you about that throughout next year. I'll put a link to her website underneath. I don't know if the blanket club is up yet. If it is, I'll link to that. But I'll put a link to her website underneath. And obviously, you can keep an eye on her uh, YouTube channel and on her Instagram. So it's called the Random Acts of Colour Blanket Club. It will run throughout the year for 12 months. Uh, and you'll get four times 20 gram DK minis on a choice of Merino DK or Merino Sparkle DK. There's no theme to it. Each month's minis will be a wild and wonderful exploration of colour. Uh, there's going to be more information coming and I will share it in the next podcast. But I wanted to, to let you know, because obviously if we're doing a blanket along that starts in January, that's going to be really interesting. I'm now thinking 20 gram minis times four every month throughout the year. Garter squish. Little TikToking going on in my head. Not TikToking. Not like I'm not like TikTok, but like as in tickety tock, tickety tock. <laughs> Stop talking. You know what I mean? <sighs> we haven't even got to the Strictly Sock Along yet, and I feel like I've bored you to tears already. Okay, Strictly Sock Along. If you don't know what the Strictly Sock Along is, where have you been? <laughs> We've been running it for eight years, for goodness sake. So the Strictly Sock Along is where we knit or crochet socks throughout the season that Strictly Come Dancing is on the telly here in the UK. Also known as, Stri uh, as Dancing with the Stars in other countries. And I believe it is on at this time of year um, or around this type of year in other countries as well. Uh, but the big thing about it is you can cheat, so you don't actually have to watch it at all. And that's one of the, it's become one of the biggest things about it and the most fun is that people come up with outrageous cheating in order to be able to join in and it's so much fun. There are some really simple rules and there are loads and loads of prize categories. It's on my Instagram, 
and also uh, on Ravelry. So you can win prizes by using the hashtag on Instagram or you can win prizes by posting your finished objects in the finished objects thread or by chatting in the chatter thread or by cheating in any of those places. <laughs> or mentioning your cheat in any of those places. So all the I'm going to draw some more prizes. All the prizes for the first 10 category and the Halloween category and the first cheating category have been sent and a fair few of you have already messaged to say you've received them. Alicia, I got your email. You were the last one to get in touch and your prize will be on the way to you tomorrow. I, I, you probably already got my email, so you probably already know that. It was lovely to hear from you. And I'm now going to draw for the Made It to Blackpool prize. So the Made It to Blackpool prize is for anyone that had finished objects in the finished object thread um, up to midnight on the day of the Blackpool show, which was Saturday the 18th of November. There were 154 finished objects in there and I've drawn two winners and I'm not gonna hold them up and show you because they're all parceled up, but I've got some overlay footage so I can show you the prizes. So the first prize is for the Christmas yarn set from uh, <laughs> Suzanne at Green Lumpkin Yarn. <laughs> um, along with a pattern, which is the Quinn's Memory Socks uh, by Weaver Makes, Sam at Weaver Makes. And the all the, by the way, all the profits from the sale of those socks, I'll link it underneath, go to the For Louis charity, which is a charity in the UK supporting families following stillbirth. I use our AI friend to draw a winner. She picked number 79, and that was Ma Soup, who is Joy in the UK. So well done, Joy. I had a look at your projects. It looks like you make a lot of socks. So you've won a sock pattern and some uh, sock yarn as well. So if you could email me, that's the best way to get in touch, um, on the email that's on the screen and in the description box underneath, or you can message me on Ravelry if that's easier for you. I will have that pattern sent to you by Sam and I will send you the Christmas yarn. Just let me know your address. And the second number that was drawn was number 25 and that is Knitter Mary and that is Mary in Somerset. Which is funny because the maker of the prize that you've won is also in Somerset and that is the wonderful Emma of Eldenwood Craft. And it is a beautiful bag and most excitingly of all, a skein of her new line of hand dyed yarn. Emma at Eldenwood Craft has started dyeing yarn. I could not be more excited. I might have ordered some when it went live earlier this week. It might arrive today. If it does arrive today, I will film it to show you and put a little overlay as I'm talking. But Mary in Somerset, you have won the bag and the yarn prize. Uh, so again, if you could get in touch with me with your dress. I also picked out some cheats that I've been spotting just for fun to let you know. And actually, Knitter Mary is on there. I'd already picked the cheats before I picked the winners, so it was really funny. So she's, she said that her cheat is that she lives in the town where B Bill Bailey, who won last year or the year, no, the year before. When did Bill Bailey win? In the last couple of years. And he, uh, she lives in the town where he grew up and went to the same dance studio as he went once or twice when he was young. <laughs> so that entitles her to knit on her Strictly socks whenever she wants. Um, Campesen Angie doesn't watch Strictly at all, but her name is Angela, and there are were there were two Angelas in this year's show, so that entitles her to knit on her Strictly socks whenever she wants. Uh, Belinda's Baubles, who is always so good at cheating, is using yarn from a dyer called Hank Me Home Tonight, which is called Unicorn Vomit, which you know best yarn name ever, which completely matched the stage for Ellie's dance on the Blackpool night and she put some pictures up and they really do match. <laughs> I thought that was an excellent cheat. But I've drawn a winner. The one that made me most impressed, um, mainly because it was about me. <laughs> me, me, me. <laughs> was Jay Wine Troll, who is Jessie in New York. Uh, she's not watching TV at all but she made three dodgy bags using my tutorial, so she deserves to knit socks. <laughs> and I will put a link to my bag making tutorial if you would like to make three dodgy bags and therefore entitle yourself to make as many socks as you want. <laughs> 
Uh, so you have won a couple of self-patterning sock yarns from I think West, York, where West Yorkshire Spinners. I think it's vintage tinsel, it's beautiful. And hobby yarn as well, which I had lurking about and thought I would donate as a prize. So if you could get in touch with me with your address in New York, very exciting, I will get those shipped out to you. I've also had a couple more pattern prizes come in. Nancy, lovely Nancy who designed the uh, Swiss Dot Shorty Socks and has the Knit Sip Happy podcast, has donated uh, a, pat a sock pattern prize, so you can choose any one of her sock patterns. So I've added that to the prize pile, so thank you, Nancy. And also I've had the most epic sock pattern donated called the Back to the 80s Socks, and it's by the Sock Knitters Club, who are um, Melena and Karen. Melena is the playful knitter here on YouTube. Can you guess what I'm gonna say? She's also doing Vlogmas. <laughs> She is in Denmark. She's a piano player, a musician, and she does all of the music for her vlogmases. Um, yeah, really beautiful. I would really recommend her vlogmas. So they have donated the pattern, uh, which I'm sure you'll agree is amazing. I, was, I said to her when I saw it, it reminds me in the 90s when we used to go to school, we used to all roll our socks down in perfect little neat little um, rolls. You had to get it exactly right. You had to match on each thing. What a palaver. Oh, yeah, so it really reminded me of that. And don't forget, there's a 20% discount off of all of Becky Dixon Designs sock patterns for, for the duration of the sock along. So you've got until the end of the year to take advantage of that. And that is everything. My throat hurts now after all that talking. I really hope it hasn't put you off watching me being so, so snotty. I've just got a couple of things I want to finish up with in and finally. First of all, I want to give a shout out to a new podcaster, the wonderful Carol Roy. She has started her own podcast called Swatch This Space. She's got four videos up already. Carol has always been so supportive in the comments, has always supported my podcast. And she started, she's in Alberta in Canada and she designed socks uh, to design sock patterns to raise money for the Five Winds Rescue and Rehabilitation Centre, which is her daughter's horse rescue centre ranch. Um, and yeah, so she's been talking a lot about that in her new podcast. And honestly, I watched the I've watched watched the first couple. She's a total podcasting natural, lovely to listen to. Uh, yeah, go and go and watch. It's the Swatch This Space podcast. I'll link her underneath. And finally, I just want to say, Vlogmas, go and watch Vlogmas, go and watch my Vlogmas. <laughs> You'll see lots more making, lots more snottiness, lots more crochet and shenanigans going on. And uh, yeah, come and have some fun over on this little wonderful life. And finally, just to say, happy holidays. I like the phrase happy holidays. I like the phrase Merry Christmas. But I think there are so many different holidays around this season, different things that people celebrate, and this time of year means different things to different people. And I think Happy Holidays encompasses it all really nicely. So whatever you celebrate, or don't celebrate, or whatever you do around this time of year, I hope you have a good few weeks with your family, or doing the things you enjoy. I know there are a lot of things, awful, things going on in the world at the moment and I think at this time of year it's hard to ignore that and to you know it's the time of year where we want to give and and wish that everybody were as lucky as us to have the peace that they have so um yeah I don't know where I'm going with that just to say that I know that life isn't easy the world isn't easy but I hope you are able to have a peaceful time and I will see you again in the new year. Until then, happy knitting, happy crocheting, and I'll see you again very soon. Bye.